dark out here and we're just on our way to an island um, an island in the middle of the marshes which is half an hour away where we're going to be staying the night to see the sunrise in the morning. This, yeah. is, this is a first for you as well right first for me too yes. um, definitely I have been me. here like more than 50 times but it would be my first time overnight in an island in the marshes <laughs> so you can imagine my excitement First for you, first for me, yeah. but uh, this is on another level. So let's see what the journey is like. Yeah. We should cover ourselves because it will be very cold. Alright, the engine is on. We're off. Let's go. The night, crocodiles or alligators just gliding across. What the does no crocodiles <laughs> really like? Just you. We're here, we've arrived exactly 30 minutes later. Right, shall we go on land? Yes. Okay, I'm excited. I can't see anything. This place looks just it's completely dark. There's no electricity, nothing. Welcome to the island. It feels so soft. It's two kinds of island here. Natural one and a man-made one. So this is a natural one. We've got a few people here with us. A whole crew, in fact. So we're going to busy ourselves with uh, preparing the beds, making sure that everybody's comfortable for the short night ahead of us. And then we're going to get ready to wake up tomorrow, just before sunrise. Hi, hi, boy, hi. Good. Might be a little bit confused as to where we are or what's going on so let me explain we are in iraq i'm here with a small crew helping me film and ali my local guide last night we drove seven hours from the super intense city of baghdad all the way to chibayish in the south and this here is no ordinary place these are the mesopotamian marshes a fertile and rich area of Iraq that was once as large as the country of Belgium. But that's a thing of the past. We'll get to that story in due course. We woke up at sunrise on one of the many islands here in the marshes. This one is home to a family of 10 who had agreed to host us for the night. These boys were born here and grew up here, and although they're very familiar with the modern world and technology, I just love the fact that they spend their playtime making these buffalo out of clay. When I asked them how they learned to make them, they said they just made them up in their heads. Isn't that the essence of being a child? So Ali, we've got a beautiful breakfast here, everybody's sharing. Tell us, what is this? We have the buffalo thick cream from the buffalo to us. It's from today. Amazing. Sure. And mixed with the uh, date syrup, 
and the sesame oil. Oh my god, that looks amazing! It's all local food. So first and the first, oil and the yeah, dates? Yeah, first simple, just like to prepare the stomach before the thick cream. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, this is this looks so good. This looks so good. Yeah. So good. So good. Unless you've been here, you've never had cheese like this. It's not cheese, it's cream. I, I don't know what it is, but it's delicious. It's gamer. <laughs> gamer. It's like it's got a sweet, slightly sweet but mild taste and it is just so thick. It I is the most delicious, most valuable cream, I mean gamma in Iraq. The most expensive one. Can I live here? Can I move here? Is that <laughs> you okay? Can? Yeah, 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 all right. Yeah. Abu Haida, the truest of locals, our guide, singer of local folk songs, and boat captain extraordinaire. Since going viral in Iraqi social media a few years back, he's been an unofficial ambassador of the marshlands. He now works with Ali on bringing travelers like us to his home, the marshes. <laughs> نحش حشيش ونحش قصب ونروح للصيد ايضا واحد من يروح ويعرف ايه جاي كان احنا من نغني بالهور واحد يحس نفسه كانه هو متونس وماخذ راحته الشخصيه والرفاهيه اللي يعني من نغني نغني براحتنا حتى واحد يغني براحته يشوف كلامه هو صحيح بالي يعني ماكو شيء بعد اعلى من عده هو مرتاح نفسيا بس هو والهور بس هو والسمشات بس هو والطير بس هو والرفيجه وهذا شعور نشعر به الراحه ان هي المتوفره اللي ماكو احسن منها بالحياه ابو هايدا knows the canals of these marshes like the back of his hand he was born and raised here and he spent the day showing us around and introducing us to some of his community like Khalid, who is a fisherman. Okay, so not all the fish end up on the plate, apparently. Some of them we can chuck back in the water and give them a new lease of life. Khalid says it's to let the river fish grow stronger, naturally. Is there, is there a lot of fish in the river these days? No. He said there's very little fish because there is very little water. Is it... Uh... So why is this place so special? These marshlands once covered a massive swathe of land in Iraq. They were so fertile and so beautiful that people compared them to the Garden of Eden. The marsh Arabs who lived here had plenty of fresh water and food to lead decent lives. But in the 1990s, former dictator of Iraq Saddam Hussein changed their fate forever. Targeting Shia rebels he thought to be hiding out in the marshes, he diverted the river flow, basically draining the marshes. Saddam's ecocide killed countless fish, destroyed the marsh ecosystem, and deprived the locals of their livelihoods. Three decades on, the marshes still haven't recovered. It doesn't help that countries like Turkey happen to control Iraq's river flow, limiting how much water reaches the marshes thousands of kilometers from the river source. With water being used as a political weapon, the Garden of Eden is falling, but its people still fight to survive. <laughs> wow, check out all this river fish. This must be the day's catch. So what happens in this part of the river is the fishermen bring all of their fish right here to the market and then from here they are processed, put in ice, on trucks, and they are transported into the cities. So, does he think that his, when his grandchildren are grown up, there will be marshes here still? He say, whenever there is water, there is marshes. Whenever there is no water, there is no marshes. In a 
place where fish populations have been dwindling and the future is uncertain, water buffalo are a big deal. They're some of the most valuable goods you can own, and the wealthy families keep entire marshland farms of these huge animals. Each adult water buffalo can be valued at up to 5,000 US dollars. So if you have a herd of 50, well, you can do the math yourself. I still have a trauma from my cow accident three months ago. Oh no, oh no. Oh my God, he's looking at me weird. He is, he doesn't like me. Hello, baby. Hello. Oh, you're so sweet. Oh my God, you are so adorable. You little baby. <laughs> I told you, I told you they're dangerous. I told you. I told you, all cattle hate me. <laughs> I'm vegetarian. What the hell? Never doing this again. Not for vlogs, not for anything. <laughs> Maybe I should stick to some lower risk activities for now. One of the ladies at the camp invited us to have some local bread with her. I definitely didn't expect to uh, come to the marshes in Iraq and uh, find a fully equipped hairdresser <laughs> willing to do my hair for me in the middle of the day. But sure, why not? <laughs> oh, ow! God, she's rough. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Helwa, <laughs> shukran. This fresh, warm, really, really warm actually, and crispy. Oh my, can you hear that? That sound of the fresh bread, fresh naan breaking up. Oh my God, amazing. Okay, taste test. Nothing beats fresh bread. There is nothing better than fresh bread. It's so delicious, so simple. Oh my God, it's good. Hello. <laughs> I don't know if I believe in the story of the Garden of Eden, but I do know that to the people of the marshes, this land was once their paradise. The Iraqi government and some international NGOs have been making projects to revive the marshlands and bring them back to their former glory. Whether they succeed, time will tell. But one thing is for sure, Abu Haida is not going anywhere.